the most important event in human history took place. Tonight we, we celebrate a, a, a special evening where our Savior commemorates something very special to us. And as such, we will have kind of this, this, this special service that revolves around, around our, our Lord's Supper and what is offered here and who offers it for us. Uh, you'll, you'll note some, some, some interesting things in our service tonight. We'll be, we'll, after our opening hymn, we'll start with the sermon. Uh, and that is so that we can kind of walk smoothly and, and unpaused uh, through the word, uh, through, the, through the liturgy until we get to that, that, that blessed sacrament of the Lord's Supper. You'll also note something tonight that will we'll end a little bit differently. Uh, we'll have this, this rite, this special tradition of, of stripping the altar, where in preparation for Good Friday, we take away the, the decoration and the items up front uh, as, as a picture and reflection of, of the humiliation of our Lord and the life that is going to be stripped away from Him. And when that is, is over, we will, we will end the service without any, any formal ending, as this evening and Good Friday will, will run together, and the same will be said on Good Friday, where the service will run into Easter Sunday. And this evening, you are uh, encouraged to stick around for prayer and meditation before dismissing quietly. The, there will be no uh, usher dismissing tonight. You are, you are free to go uh, as you please. Um, but we do this tonight not, not just to be sad, not to be somber, um, but to seriously reflect on what our Savior endured, uh, what He has gone through, but all the while keeping in our minds the gospel, the joy and the peace and the comfort that we have in this Holy Week and what is, is ours in this, in this night and tomorrow, and of course the great, great celebration we will have on Easter Sunday. So with that said, let us continue now into our worship. We will begin with our hymn, The Death of Jesus Christ, Our Lord, Selected Stanzas. In the name of the Father, 
and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. It was just hours away. He knew what was going to happen. He knew how it was going to take place. There could have been a hundred different things going through his mind. But it was at this moment, it was on this night, that all Jesus could think about was his disciples, his friends, his brothers and sisters. In just a few hours, the most important event in human history would take place. And you'd think Jesus would would, would spend the time thinking about, about all of it, about his suffering and his death. But on this night, he makes it about us. On this night, Jesus does something special. Our Savior gives to us something special. For tonight, our Savior willingly gives His body. Our Savior willingly pours out His blood. Our Savior does all of this for you. Oh, this night was was already special for God's people. This, This night began the celebration of the Passover. It was a a memorial celebration to remind the Israelites of their deliverance from Egypt. Through a, a vicarious atonement of shedding of blood, the people of Israel were spared God's wrath. So God instituted the Israel instituted this meal to the Israelites to remind them how God had made them his people. Likewise, tonight, Jesus does something special. He was very eager to have this celebration with his disciples. He had everything prepared. He had everything planned out for this to take place. For Jesus was going to institute a new meal. He institutes something special to remind his people of their own deliverance, of a different kind of deliverance. Jesus sits down with his disciples and we see how he institutes this meal. And he took bread, gave thanks and broke it and gave it to them saying, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Clearly this is something special. For in this bread that he breaks apart and shares with his disciples, he says that this is my body And he says it is his body. It doesn't say it represents his body. This is what he is offering. He gives to his disciples his very body. And he willingly gives that body. And you hear that the most important words in that phrase, he says he gives this body for you. And what is so special about this for you is that it's not just for benefit. But when your Savior says this body is given for you, He's saying it's because it's in place of you. He's giving it instead of you. Our Lord willingly gives His body in our place for our benefit. This is a very serious moment for Jesus. This is something he, He wanted to do. This was something he was doing, something he was instituting hours before his suffering would begin. He was doing something important. He wanted his disciples to understand the serious nature of what he is doing. He wanted all of his people to understand how serious this is. For in this meal, he demonstrates how deliverance was brought about. He reminds his people of what he had come to do. He had, to come, he had come to give his body for his people. He had come because of his people's sin. How often do we actually take those words seriously? How often do we recognize just how important, how often do we take seriously what is offered here, what our Savior is giving How often do we take seriously the reason 
His body is offered. And sometimes we, we come forward not thinking. Sometimes we, we come forward just, just out, of, out, of, out of tradition, just because it's what we normally have done. Sometimes we come failing to take seriously our sin. We fail to take seriously our sin, thinking our, our, our sins of thought, our sins of word really aren't, aren't that big of a deal. We, we think that, that our, our pet sins, the, the sins that we, that we constantly repeat over and over, that they're no big deal in, in the grand scheme of things. Instead, we, we indulge them, we, we engage in them more, we, we hide them. When we don't take our sin seriously, really what we're doing is we're failing to take seriously our Savior's grace. Because it was because of our sin that our Savior had to give His body. That is the reason He had come. Because of our sin, we had nothing to offer to our God. We had nothing to give to Him. We were born in sin, born His enemies, born spiritually dead. All of our actions, our thoughts, and our words had no value to God to bring about our own righteousness, our own salvation. And our sin brings with it serious consequence, serious punishment. And our Savior recognized that. He understood how serious all of this was. And He takes this moment seriously. Because at this moment, He was doing everything for you. He did it in your place. Our Savior gives His body for you. Our Savior willingly came down to this earth. He became true man in our place. To live in our place. To live perfectly God's law instead of us. And then our Savior willingly gave His body on the cross. He willingly gave up His body to suffering and death for you. This is the very same body He offers you now in this sacrament. He invites you to the supper to receive that body and to receive that benefit. Do this, He says, because He is serious about what He wants to give to you. He wants to give you forgiveness. He wants to offer you life and salvation which is found here. By the giving of His body, you now stand as precious in God's sight. By the giving of His body, your body will be made new at the resurrection. By the giving of His body, you will celebrate that that feast and its fulfillment in heaven at the side of your Savior. By the giving of this body now, you are assured of this now and always. This is what He has done for you. But this is only half of what our Savior has done. He continues with His institution. In the same way, after the supper, He took the cup saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. Jesus passes a a cup of wine to His disciples. The wine in this cup is is a new covenant, he says, that he is making with God's people. This covenant, it is this covenant that is his very blood. Not a representation, but what is there is truly his blood. Blood that he willingly pours out. Blood that he willingly pours out for you. Again, we see just how how serious our Savior is with this meal. For in this meal, He he reminds us of this new covenant. He shows us this new covenant that He has made. A covenant that is different than the one that the Lord gave to to Moses and the people of Israel. uh, That temporary one. Where they had to fulfill God's commands and God would be His people. This is a different covenant. A different kind of contract. A contract that pointed back to the very beginning of that first promise in the Garden of Eden. Here are the terms. 
that Jesus willingly pours out his blood for the salvation of all. In this covenant, Jesus freely offers forgiveness and life by his work and his work alone. It is completely done in him. It's one-sided. Jesus has done it all for you. There's nothing you can do. There's nothing you need to do. It's all been done for you. This is what is offered to you in this sacrament. And so as such, this special institution, this special meal is something that you cherish. Because of what is offered here, you treasure it. And since you treasure it, you, you want to do it. You want to partake of this sacrament. And as you do, you, you come forward and you partake of this sacrament seriously. You seriously ponder and contemplate the mystery and the miracle that is here. That in, with, and under the bread and the wine, you find your Savior's true body and blood. As you come forward, you take seriously your sin and the consequences it deserves. But as you come forward, you take serious the promise that your Savior gives here. That here you receive forgiveness and life. You take seriously the fact that this is something for you. It's not a pledge of your loyalty to God, but rather it is God's pledge to you that his Savior has willingly poured out his blood for you. Through the shedding of that blood that your debt has been paid in full, all of your sin has now been washed away. You have been made right with God. And he pours that out for you now. As you receive that blood willingly poured out, he gives you full assurance of your salvation. He strengthens you in your faith once more. He renews you to go out once again to take seriously this new life which has been given, given to you by His work. This is what He has done for you. Of all of the things that could be running through His head, our Savior chooses to think about us of all of the things that could have been running through his head, you were the one. And it was with you in mind that he has given this special meal. It's with you in mind that he instituted this special meal. So tonight, my brothers and sisters, you who stand by faith, cherish this meal, this, this special gift. Contemplate the mystery and the miracle that is found here. Come and receive what is here. Your Savior's body willingly given. Your Savior's blood willingly poured out. Do this knowing that it is all for you. Amen. Please stand. Grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. We continue now with our confession. Brothers and sisters in Christ, in this Lenten season we have heard again how our Lord walked the path of suffering which led him to the cross for our salvation. We have, all, we all have also heard our Lord's call to intensify our struggle against sin, death, and the devil, all that keeps us from loving God and one another. This is the struggle to which we were committed at baptism. God's forgiveness and the power of his spirit to amend our lives continue with us because of his love for us in Jesus our Savior. Within the family of the church, God never wearies of giving peace and new life. In the absolution, we receive forgiveness as from God himself. This absolution we should not doubt, but firmly believe that our sins are thus forgiven before God in heaven, for it comes to us in the name and by the command of our Lord. We who receive God's love in Jesus Christ are called to love one another, to be servants to each other as Jesus became our servant. In Holy Communion, first instituted on this night, the members of Christ's body participate most intimately in his love. Remembering our Lord's Last Supper with his disciples,
We eat the bread and drink the cup of this meal. Together we receive the Lord's gift of his body and blood for forgiveness and participate in that new covenant that makes us one with him and one another. The Lord's Supper is the promise of the great banquet we will share with all the faithful when our Lord returns, the joyous culmination of our reconciliation with God and each other. As we begin the solemn celebration of our Lord's passion, let us confess our sins to him, receive his absolution, and be reconciled to God and each other in Christian love. Holy God, gracious Father, I am sinful by nature and have sinned against you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have not loved you with my whole heart. I have not loved others as I should. I deserve your punishment both now and forever. But Jesus, my Savior, paid for my sins with his innocent suffering and death. Trusting in him, I pray, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Our gracious Father in heaven has been merciful to us. He sent his only son, Jesus Christ, who gave his life as the atoning sacrifice for the sins of the world. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ has forgiven us, has reconciled us to God, and has promised us the power to forgive and love one another. Relying on his promise, therefore, be reconciled with one another. Brothers and sisters, may the peace of Christ rule in our hearts, in our words, and in our actions. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, in the sacrament of Holy Communion, you give us your true body and blood as a remembrance of your suffering and death on a cross. Grant us so firmly to believe your words and promise that we may always partake of the sacrament to our eternal good. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. We continue with God's word appointed for this evening, beginning with uh, a reading from Jeremiah chapter 31. There is a lot of doom and gloom in the book of Jeremiah. And yet in this very chapter, we find one of the, great, one of the most beautiful gospel promises in the Old Testament. Here our Lord speaks of the new covenant, the new covenant which will be fulfilled in our Lord. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the people of Israel and with the people of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to lead them out of Egypt because they broke my covenant, though I was a husband to them, declares the Lord. This is the covenant I will make with the people of Israel after that time, declares the Lord. I will put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. No longer will they teach their neighbor or say to one another, Know the Lord, because they will all know me. From the least of them to the greatest, declares the Lord. For I will forgive their wickedness and remember their sins no more. The word of our Lord. We continue with our Psalm of the Day, Psalm 116, displayed for you on the screens and found on page 107 in the front of the red hymnal.
Our second reading for this evening is taken from Hebrews chapter 10. And this reading almost serves as a, as a commentary to the words we just heard from Jeremiah. What is ours because the Lord has made this new covenant with us? It is complete confidence. Confidence that we may draw closer to Him. Confidence that we can come into His presence. Confidence of knowing what He offers us when we come together. It's a confidence we share and encourage with one another. The Holy Spirit also testifies to us about this. First, He says, This is the covenant I will make with them. After that time, says the Lord, I will put my laws in their hearts and I will write them on their minds. Then He adds, Their sins and lawless acts I will remember no more. And where these have been forgiven, sacrifice for sin is no longer necessary. Therefore, brothers and sisters, Since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way opened for us through the curtain that is His body, and since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and with the full assurance that faith brings, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for He who promised is faithful. And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another. And all the more as you see the day approaching. The word of our Lord. We continue now with the verse of the day. Whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Please stand for the gospel. Here we have in its entirety now the the gospel account of Luke of the institution of the Lord's Supper. Listen again to how the supper is for you. Then came the day of unleavened bread on which the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed. Jesus sent Peter and John saying, go and make preparations for us to eat the Passover. Where do you want us to prepare for it? They asked. He replied, as you enter the city, A man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him to the house that he enters and say to the owner of the house, The teacher asks, Where is the guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs, all furnished. Make preparations there. They left and found things just as Jesus had told them, so they prepared the Passover. When the hour came, Jesus and his apostles reclined at the table. He said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. After taking the cup, he gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among you. For I tell you, I will not drink again from the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took bread, gave thanks and broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, this, is the cu- this cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. You may be seated for our hymn of the day, Jesus Christ, our blessed Savior.
we continue with our thank offerings to the Lord. Please stand for prayer. This evening for the prayer of the church, we use what is called the, the Great Litany, a, a long series of responsive prayers. We come before God um, knowing that we can approach him in confidence because of what his son has done for us, in confidence that we know that he is hearing us and that he is answering us according to his mercy and according to his good and gracious will. You will find those responses for you on the screens. O God the Father, creator of heaven and earth, have mercy on us. O God the Son, redeemer of the world, have mercy on us. O God the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide, have mercy on us. Holy, blessed, and glorious Trinity, three persons in one God, have mercy on us. Remember not, Lord Christ, our offenses, nor the offenses of our forebears, Spare us, good Lord, spare your people whom you have redeemed with your precious blood from all spiritual blindness, from pride, vainglory, and hypocrisy, from envy, hatred, and malice, and from all lack of charity, from all deadly sin and from the deceits of the world, the flesh, and the devil, from all false doctrine, heresy, and schism, from hardness of heart and contempt for your word and your will, from earthquake and tempest, from drought, fire, and flood, from civil strife and violence, from war and murder, and from dying suddenly and unprepared. Good Lord, deliver us. By the mystery of your holy incarnation, by your baptism, fasting, and temptation, and by your proclamation of the kingdom, by your bloody sweat and bitter grief, by your cross and suffering, and by your precious death and burial, by your mighty resurrection, by your glorious ascension, and by the coming of the Holy Spirit, in our times of trouble, in our times of prosperity, in the hour of death, and on the, on the day of judgment, good Lord, deliver us. Receive our prayers, O Lord our God. Hear us, good Lord. Govern and direct your holy church. Fill it with love and truth, and grant it that unity which is according to your will. Enlighten all ministers with true knowledge and understanding of your word that by their preaching and living they may declare it clearly and show its truth. Encourage and prosper your servants who spread the gospel in all the world and send out laborers into the harvest. Bless and keep your people that all may find and follow their true vocation and ministry. Give us hearts to love and reverence you for you that we may diligently live according to your commandments. To all your people, give grace to hear and receive your word and to bring forth the fruit of the Spirit. Strengthen those who stand firm in the faith. Encourage the faint-hearted. Raise up those who fall. And finally, give us the victory. Hear us, good Lord. Rule the hearts of your servants, the President of the United States and all others in authority, that they may do justice, love mercy, and walk in the ways of truth. Bless and defend all who strive for our safety and protection and shield them in all dangers and adversities. Grant wisdom and insight to those who govern us and to judges and magistrates, the grace to execute justice with mercy. Hear us, good Lord. To all nations grant unity, peace, and concord, and to all people give clothing, food, and shelter. Grant us abundant harvests, strength and skill to conserve the resources of the earth, and wisdom to use them well. Enlighten with your spirit all who teach and all who learn. 
Come to the help of all who are in danger, necessity, and trouble. Protect all who travel by land, air, or water, and show your pity on all prisoners and captives. Strengthen and preserve all women who are in childbirth and all young children, and comfort the aged, the bereaved, and the lonely. Defend and provide for the widowed and the orphans, the refugees and the homeless, the unemployed and all who are desolate and oppressed. Heal those who are sick in body or mind and give skill and compassion to all who care for them. Grant us true repentance, forgive our sins, and strengthen us by your Holy Spirit to amend our lives according to your holy word. Hear us, good Lord. Son of God, we ask you to hear us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. Amen. We join together to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is good and right so to do. It is truly good and right that we should at all times and in all places give you thanks, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who brought the, sal the gift of salvation to all people by his death on the tree of the cross, so that the devil who overcame us by a tree would in turn by a tree be overcome. Therefore, with all the saints on earth and hosts of heaven, we praise your holy name and join their glorious song. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
may be seated. Now at this time, we invite the members of Shepherd of the Lakes Lutheran Church to come forward to receive the true body and blood of your Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, and again, this evening, if you wouldn't mind taking a, a step further back from the stairs so that I could use the, the front step to walk along and, and distribute the elements. Thank you.
You may remain seated for the prayer of thanksgiving. We give thanks, almighty God, that you have refreshed us with this holy supper. We pray that through it you will strengthen our faith in you and increase our love for one another. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We continue now with our hymn, O Lord, we praise you. We continue now with the stripping of the altar. While the pieces of the altar are being taken away, it is tradition to read from Psalm 88. Psalm 88 is a very somber psalm, and yet it begins with a word of hope, a word of trust. After the, the psalm is finished and the altar has been stripped away, you are once again welcome to stick around for prayer and meditation before dismissing quietly. Uh, the Lord be with you until we gather again tomorrow to commemorate the death of of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, you are the God who saves me. Day and night I cry out to you. May my prayer come before you. Turn your ear to my cry. I am overwhelmed with troubles, and my life draws near to death. 
I am counted among those who go down to the pit. I am like one without strength. I am set apart with the dead, like the slain who lie in the grave, whom you remember no more, who are cut off from your care. You have put me in the lowest pit, in the darkest depths. Your wrath lies heavily on me. You have overwhelmed me with all your waves. You have taken from me my closest friends and have made me repulsive to them. I am confined and cannot escape. My eyes are dim with grief. I call to you, Lord, every day. I spread out my hands to you. Do you show your wonders to the dead? Do their spirits rise up and praise you? Is your love declared in the grave, your faithfulness in destruction? Are your wonders known in the place of the darkness, or your righteous deeds in the land of oblivion? But I cry to you for help, Lord. In the morning my prayer comes before you. Why, Lord, do you reject me and hide your face from me? From my youth I have suffered and been close to death. I have borne your tears and am in despair. Your wrath has swept over me. Your terrors have destroyed me. All day long they surround me like a flood. They have completely engulfed me. You have taken from me friend and neighbor. Darkness is my closest friend. 